Now, your primetime local news leader, Fox 22 News at 10. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I'm Beth Jones. First tonight, recently unsealed court documents reveal that the FBI seized what is believed to be human remains from a Fairfield antique shop. Our A.J. Douglas explains. Back in May of this year, a search warrant was issued for pulling antiques and auctions to gather evidence connected to an alleged illegal trafficking of Native American human remains. These court documents tell that story. Documents from the United States District Court for the District of Maine detail a beaded American Indian pipe bag with Apache Scout was listed on the family auction business website. The item is advertised as documented scalp and this large lock of hair tied to a 1899 dated tag. The item was seized by law enforcement following an anonymous tip. The Public Affairs Advisor for the Federal Bureau of Investigation's Boston Field Office released a statement stating, quote, with respect to the recovery, there is a process underway to determine whether the item is human, whether it is Native American, and whether, if Native American, the remains are that of a person who is a member of a particular tribe. If it's determined that the remains are those of a Native American who was a member of a particular tribe, efforts will be taken to repatriate the remains back to the tribe for interment. End quote. The auctioneering firm has been in operation since the 1950s. Per the website, most items are listed for over $10,000. We reached out to the owners of Poland Antiques and Auctions for a statement, but were advised no one was available at this time. In Fairfield, A.J. Douglas, ABC 7, Fox 22. Well, the Walgreens in Cornish was significantly damaged after police say a woman's SUV crashed into the building. The York County Sheriff's Office says the 77-year-old Limerick woman had just left the Walgreens on Maple Street Thursday and was trying to drive away in her Subaru. According to deputies, instead of placing her vehicle into reverse, she put it into drive and went through the wall and into the store. The woman was not hurt and no one inside the store was injured either. Deputies Deputies say the building sustained major structural damage and remains closed. Well, on this Veterans Day, aside from honoring those who served, we're looking at the resources available to help them. Veteran homelessness has decreased nationwide in recent years, but in Maine, it's still rising. Dan Lamparello has more on what can be done to help. Oh, say can you see? It's become a day of reflection and remembrance. It's just incredibly moving. But this Veterans Day is also a time to share a message about resources. People do need some extra help. Roger Stevens is the commander of the Midcoast VFW Post, which has worked to get that help to veterans, especially those experiencing mental health issues and homelessness. There are many people that uh, when they come back into the civilian world, they, they just need help adapting. While the number of homeless veterans has been cut in half nationally over the past decade, here in Maine, those numbers are on the rise. New data shows there's been a 91% increase in veteran homelessness in Maine since 2020. We've got to do more in that area, and homelessness is a, is a national problem. Senator Angus King says the region's affordable housing crisis is part of the challenge, but he believes helping veterans better transition from active duty to veteran status also needs to be a top priority. The handoff has to be warmer, and uh, one of the proposals we're talking about is having a buddy system. When you come out, you're assigned somebody in your community who's a veteran who can help you navigate the programs and all of those kinds of things. Some organizations, like those that partner with the VFW, are taking their own steps, creating temporary mobile shelters to house veterans in different parts of the state. They uh, are fully insulated. They can be used year-round. And uh, he actually has uh, 13 that are out in use right now. One piece of the puzzle that hopes to better protect those who protect it are freedoms. I think it's got to be a high priority. And that was Dan Lamparello reporting. Well, on this day, 104 years ago, the guns of World War I fell silent on the Western Front, and 116,516 Americans had given their lives.
Now, today at the World War I Memorial in Washington, D.C., there was a ceremony to remember with bells of peace at the 11th hour on the 11th day. There was an incredible performance of sacrifice of valor, of commitment, and I think fairly you can say uh, that we helped rescue civilization. The ceremony ended with a wreath laying at the monument, a remembrance of all the lives lost and those wounded, an award that changed the world. And a reminder from BangorFriends.org now, with the storm coming in tonight, they want to make sure the community knows that the warming shelters are open. The Brick Church on Union Street and the Mansion Church on Center Street in Bangor are open seven days a week. They are also looking for volunteers to help out. You can check out www.BangorFriends.org for more details there. Well, according to paperwork filed in U.S. District Court, N.D. Paper, who owns Kraft Pulp Mill in Old Town, has filed a motion to dismiss a complaint. Back on October 7th, Walter Demons of Milford and Kirk Ramsey of Bradley filed a class action complaint against the mill for the noxious odors. The claim said that through the defendant's operation, maintenance, and design of the facility, the smell was causing property damage through nuisance, trespass, and negligence. The motion to dismiss says that the suit shows no merit with no supporting legal evidence. We will now await the findings of the court. Well, RSV continues to overwhelm hospitals in the state, and health officials say the hospital shouldn't necessarily be your first destination. Johnny Maffei has more. Statewide and regionally, what we have been seeing in recent weeks is that hospitals are under strain. That's the word from Maine CDC Director Dr. Nirav Shah. The virus overwhelming the system right now? RSV. It's hitting hospitals earlier in the season than usual. RSV is a virus that can severely impact young children. The main CDC director says you shouldn't necessarily run to the hospital if your child has symptoms including coughing, a fever, runny nose, and congestion. First and foremost, call your doctor's office. Call your pediatrician's office before you necessarily go to the emergency department. Of course, if your child is in distress and having trouble breathing, that's when you want to think about going to the emergency department. Dr. Shaw says RSV isn't the only thing going around. COVID's still out there as well as the flu. He says it's, quote, picking up steam. And we asked him about the efficacy of flu shots. He says doctors and scientists find flu variants circulating in the southern hemisphere and use that to find the right ingredients for the vaccine for the northern hemisphere's flu season. Some years that scientific assessment is closer to the bullseye. Some years it's a little bit further off. Last year, for example... The flu shot was not a great match for what viruses ended up circulating. This year, however, the flu shot looks to be a much better match for the viruses that are circulating in North America right now. Dr. Nerev Shah believes the COVID outlook will improve this winter over last year because more shots are available for more people. All righty, well, let's hit pause here, take a look outside and get a first check of our forecast. Thank you so much, Beth. Our first weather today is brought to you by Goose River Farm Meat Store. So another beautiful day outside. Temperatures in the 60s, even a couple of 70s sneaking in in the lower part of our state. But the coast was still in the 60s, lower 60s at that by Bar Harbor, by Rockland. But overall, we were looking nice. Not for long, though, folks. Take a look at the Midwest. This cold front right about here. And just ahead of it, temperatures are balmy, beautiful, 60s, 70s, but big, big changes are on the way. Wind speeds are a bit on the breezy end right now as the wind is blowing from the south for the most part. And that's really bringing in all of those warm temperatures from the south. But the winds will start to transition in the next couple of days. Because of all those breezy winds, we do have some gale warnings in effect until 5 p.m., tomorrow so keep an eye on the seas if you're out and about but tonight though temperatures will continue to drop still well above average in those mid 60s as rain showers start to move in beth all righty conrad thanks so much and still to come on fox 22 news at 10 the town of bar harbor gathers to celebrate the end of the tourist season in their pjs 
And a ribbon cutting ceremony is held for the Our Heroes Military Museum. We'll have those stories and more local news when we come right back. Wherever you are, whether you're ready or not, it's coming with a purpose, with persistence, with the power to change the way you live. So you don't have to change the way you live. Generac Automatic Standby Generators. Control your power. Control your life. Visit Generac.com. Dancing is everything. Soccer is the best. But her moderate to severe eczema could make it hard for her. Now, I'm staying ahead of it. Dupixent helps heal your skin from within so they can have clearer skin and less itch. Serious allergic reactions can occur that can be severe. Tell your doctor about new or worsening eye problems such as eye pain or vision changes, including blurred vision, joint aches and pain, or a parasitic infection. Don't change or stop asthma medicines without talking to your doctor. Ask your doctor about Dupixent. ABC7 and Fox 22, live at the Anna Shriners Festival of Trees on November 17th. A beautiful holiday live event sponsored locally by Cat Tracks LaGrange, your dealer for Hewitt Docks and Grasshopper Lawn Mowers. Leo & Sons Auto Repair, a family-owned business providing fast and dependable auto repair services. And Jerry's Used Cars at two locations, Route 7 Corinna and State Street VZ. Looking for winter services? There is still time to sign up. The pros at Atlantic Lawn Care and Landscape specialize in snow removal and ice management for commercial and residential properties. They will take care of the snow plowing, snow blowing, shoveling, salting, and sanding. Atlantic now has two locations and is accepting new clients in Brewer, Bangor, Beezy, and in town Orno, Brunswick, Thompson, Bath, and surrounding areas. Call for your free estimate or visit our website for customizable services. Local, reliable, and fully insured. Atlantic Lawn Care and Landscape. Start Saturday strong as C.J. Stroud and number two Ohio State battle Indiana. Big noon Saturday on Fox. Sundays, it's the best two hours of NFL coverage. Loaded with talent. Starting with Fox NFL kickoff at 11. Heads up. It is caught. Then at noon, take it to the next level on Fox NFL Sunday. Power here we go again. America's number one pregame show. The best NFL pregame shows are back-to-back only on Fox. A new museum opened its doors today in Lincoln. The Our Heroes Military Museum hosted its grand opening this Veterans Day from 10 to 5. A ribbon cutting, live music, and Civil War reenactors were just a few of the highlights. People turned out, gave us plenty of support, uh, plenty of uh, plenty of donations, uh, not just monetarily, but also with um, stuff they had in their homes. They brought in. Uh, out of their closets, and we didn't expect it. Well, displays include uniforms, models of battles, and various artifacts spanning from the Revolutionary War to Vietnam. Museum staff hope that families and students can learn from the exhibits, and they say they do plan to be a resource for local educators and a destination for field trips. The museum is open Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 10 to 2, and also on Sundays from 1 to 5. Lots to be learned there for sure. Well, a Bangor Museum ended its season with a celebration to honor its veterans. The Coal Land Transportation Museum celebrated Veterans Day with a performance from the Bangor Band and a selection of essays from local students. The essays were the result of the museum's veteran interview program. For the program, the students are matched up with vets and discuss what freedom means to them. According to the museum's director, Jennifer Munson, the goal of the conversation is to teach high school and middle school students that freedom isn't free. Veterans Day means so much. Uh, Galen Cole was a World War II veteran and Veterans Day and uh, freedom meant so much to him personally. That's why they began the veteran interview program and why they do the essays so that students are given the chance to be taught that and taught that by our veterans. Well, the Cole Land Transportation Museum will reopen May 1st and for more information you can visit colemuseum.org. 
Well, it's a huge donation, $1.5 million to help the Travis Mills Foundation. The organization based in Maine has served nearly 1,000 veterans and their families. This is a very big deal for the foundation. Now, that's because the donation is nearly half of its operating budget for the year. The organization has a retreat center in the Belgrade Lakes region for post-9-11 veterans injured in active duty or as a result of their service. They receive an all-inclusive all expenses paid experience in Maine. Plus, they just opened a new health and wellness center two months ago. Travis Mills says the money will help them reach more families and support their unique programs. That includes one for post-traumatic stress for veterans and first responders. The big gift is coming from Gar the Gary Sinise Foundation. The award-winning actor has long been a supporter of veterans, and Travis Mills says the two have known each other for years now and considers him a mentor, which is is why this means so much. You know, just having him as a friend is, is incredible, but then to have him believe in me and trust me with a $1.5 million donation at the Travis Mills Foundation is just, uh, it's, it's just amazing. Well, in a statement, Gary Sinise says Mills has been an inspiration to him ever since the two met, saying it's, quote, an honor to support the great work of the foundation. Well, the, greater annual, the annual Greater Bangor Area Veterans Day Parade returned to the streets of Bangor and Brewer this year. The local celebration came back to pay tribute to an important group of Mainers. Veterans Day is a time to honor those who have served, and for some, a reminder to show support more than one day a year. I think we should honor our veterans. I think we should keep, keep them in mind all the time for what's going on. I think we should be taking care of each and every one of our veterans without, uh, without any question whatsoever. Veterans say they were happy to see the parade streets lined with children's smiling faces, showing that a new generation is learning about the value of their sacrifices. In addition, high school bands, scout troops, and more showed up to support Maine's large veteran community. The community is strong with respect to its veterans affairs and the way it supports its veterans and the activities of the Department of Defense, the Air National Guard specifically in the city of Bangor and the Twin City of Brewer. Uh, we're very thankful for how they support us and it comes out on a day like today where they're on the sides of the roads cheering us on and supporting us uh, and we're honoring them as we march. The parade, hosted by the Bangor High School JROTC, began in the Brewer Hannaford Twin City Plaza before crossing the Joshua Chamberlain Bridge and ending on Exchange Street in Bangor. David Ledford, ABC7 and Fox 22. Well, according to the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs, an estimated 10% of Maine's population has served in the military. And to support Maine veterans, you can visit mainveterans.org. Alrighty, well, coming up on the 10 p.m. news on Fox 22, Republicans are watching leads dwindle as more mail-in ballots are slowly being counted in key battleground states. And several states across the U.S. are experiencing a listeria outbreak linked to deli meat and cheeses. Well, those stories and more as the 10 p.m. news on Fox 22 continues. $7.8 million. That's how much I made home sellers in the past two years. Planning on selling? I'm Holly Taylor. Come to the one, gets it done. Holly Taylor, dot realtor. Hey, it's Eric from Green Bear 420. We've been in business since 2010 and going strong, so stop in and check us out. We specialize in glass art by over 100 local artists and even have live glass blowing. Plus, we carry incense, novelties, t-shirts, and hard-to-find items. We have tons of local products for the tie-dye wearing person in your circle of friends. Come see us at 531 Moosehead Trail in Newport. And remember, Green Bear 420, it's not just a store, it's a lifestyle. Come try one of our daily specials at Pat's Pizza in Hamden. Tuesday spaghetti or ziti with meatballs or sausage, only $5.50. Wednesday, large one-topping pizza, only $8.50. Thursday, get an oven-baked wrap for only $6. Friday is fish and fries for only $8. And Saturday, get a small one-item pizza with a fountain soda, only $8. Bring the family to Pat's Pizza, 662 Main Road, North Hamden. Whether you're hurt by a box truck or by any commercial vehicle, you may have a big case worth big money if you've been hurt by any commercial truck. Call the twos. 
We win for you. Hurt by a commercial truck? Come out on top. Call the twos. I brought in Ensure Max Protein with 30 grams of protein. Those who tried me felt more energy in just two weeks. Uh, Here, I'll take that. Ensure Max Protein with 30 grams of protein, one gram of sugar, and nutrients for immune health. Find out where that road leads. Take on any challenge. When you have the number one brand in dependability, you stop thinking about what you can't do and start doing what you never thought possible. Kia, movement that inspires. When selling your home, knowing your options could make you tens of thousands of dollars. That's what I do for my clients. I'm Holly Taylor. Come to the one who gets it done. Holly Taylor. Dot Realtor. Honoring all that are and have served. Nearly four days after Election Day, the balance of power in Congress is still undecided. Control of the Senate could hinge on races in Arizona and Nevada. After a dump of votes in Nevada Friday night, the state Senate race is now a dead heat. Fox's Madeline Rivera reports from Washington. Election officials in Nevada and Arizona are urging patience as vote counting stretches into the weekend. We will be working Saturday and we will be working Sunday to move through these ballots so that we can get through the 400,000 to 410,000 that we're still working on. The deadline statutorily is for me to finish counting mail ballots by Tuesday, so we have plenty of time on Tuesday. Democrats are growing more optimistic about their chances of winning their Senate races in the two states. Democratic incumbent Senator Mark Kelly is holding on to his lead over Republican Blake Masters in Arizona. And in Nevada, Democratic incumbent Senator Catherine Cortez Masto now lags by less than 1,000 votes behind Republican Adam Laxalt, with thousands of more ballots left to be counted. Laxalt had projected optimism Thursday night. We feel like we're in a great, great position and uh, just super proud of my team and uh, a lot of hard work. Though many have expressed frustration at the delays, others are also defending election workers who are putting in long hours tallying ballots. It's unfortunate that I think in these two states they have processes that really take a long time and that they felt overwhelmed, at, at least in one of them, by the, by the ballots that were left, you know, a day of. Uh, but, you know, there don't seem to be any real allegations of fraud or mayhem here seems to be very good transparency. If Democrats win Nevada and Arizona, they'll take control of the Senate, regardless of the results of a runoff in Georgia next month. Republicans, meanwhile, remain confident they'll win a narrow majority in the House. In Washington, Mather Rivera, Fox News. Well, all across the nation, America paid tribute to its veterans today, especially in the nation's capital, where they're marking 40 years since the dedication of the Vietnam Veterans Memorial. It's the most visited memorial on the National Mall, and Fox's Caroline Shively reports from Washington. Fred Miller was a medic in the Mekong Delta in 1968. 54 years later, he stands at the Vietnam Veterans Memorial, photographing the names of the men in the 9th Infantry he couldn't save. A lot of things take me back to those times, and I feel sad that Maybe I made it and they didn't. Uh, some people gave their life uh, and I survived. You know, maybe it should have been the other way around. While Miller served in Vietnam, his parents kept a map marking the spots where they learned from the news his division was fighting. Thirty-some years later, Miller watched the news to track his own son in Baghdad. Glad my son, that was a career military officer, made it back from Iraq. Despite the rain, Miller and hundreds of veterans and their families gathered at the wall on Friday, 40 years after the memorial was dedicated. For 40 years, this granite wall has never been just about history. The sacrifices of these 58,281 fallen Americans remain with us. They shape who we are today, and they urge us to live up to America's promise. Their names now etched along the wall. 
eventually we're all going to be gone, the, the Vietnam veterans, but we're going to have a place where people can still come and, and see and, and get healing. Around 11,000 women also served in Vietnam, 90% of them as nurses. Eight of their names are engraved here at the memorial. In Washington, Caroline Shively, Fox News. Meanwhile, the list is growing in regards to the states battling a listeria outbreak linked to deli meat and cheeses. Dozens have been sickened. One death has been reported. Fox's Laura Engel has that story. The multi-state food poisoning scare has led health officials to warn Americans to use caution while consuming deli meat and cheeses after listeria contamination sickened and hospitalized over a dozen people caused one death and one miscarriage. Officials with the Centers for Disease Control say you are at higher risk for severe listeria illness if you are pregnant, 65 or older, or have a weakened immune system due to certain medical treatments or conditions. One reason listeria outbreaks can happen with deli items is because the bacteria can easily spread among food on deli countertops, slicers, and surfaces where deli meats such as cold cuts and hot dogs are handled. The CDC telling those high-risk groups not to eat anything from a deli that isn't, quote, steaming hot. The outbreak has reached six states, including New York, where several cases were tied to a deli in Brooklyn. Other cases were reported in Illinois, Massachusetts, California, and New Jersey. And as of Friday, one death was reported in Maryland, all since April of last year. Listeria is the third leading cause of death from food poisoning in the United States. According to the CDC, listeria causes illness in 1,600 Americans each year. The CDC says the true number of sick people is probably higher. Not everyone that gets a bad stomach ache reports it. Best advice to avoid listeria contamination? You've heard it all your life. Wash your hands with soap and water. And due to the outbreak, don't eat deli meat if you are at high risk. In New York, Laura Ingle, Fox News. Well, Florida's coastal communities were hit hard by another deadly storm this week. And this time, Nicole pummeled the East Coast with heavy rain and devastating storm surge. Fox's Phil Keating has the latest. We are assessing damage. Uh, we're cautious about dangerous areas. Uh, we're getting back to business. Cleanup and recovery efforts underway along Florida's east coast after Nicole leaves behind a path of destruction. In the hardest hit areas, Wilbur by the Sea and Daytona Beach Shores, nearly 50 homes, dozens of condos, hotels, and even some 10 story buildings have all been labeled unsafe due to beach erosion from a devastating storm surge. People inside forced to evacuate and leave everything behind. Dozens of other homes and businesses also completely destroyed after they collapsed into the ocean. And the water is coming right up to the windows, and it was like a, it sounded just like a freight train. The storm killed at least five people after making landfall as a Category 1 hurricane just south of Vero Beach early Thursday. Orange County officials say two people were electrocuted by downed power lines, and two others were killed in a crash on Florida's turnpike. A fifth person died while hunkering down inside a yacht in the town of Coco. I feel sorry for the children that play here. I feel sorry for all the residents that live here. The focus is now turning towards rebuilding. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis has promised the state will help. He was out Friday in Daytona Beach Shores to get a first-hand look at the damage. Nicole is now a tropical depression, still pouring rain on parts of Georgia, the Carolinas, as it moves north into the northeast U.S. over the weekend. Expect a lot of rain. In Wilbur by the Sea, Florida, Phil Keating, Fox News. And still to come on Fox 22 News at 10, join locals and vendors for the Cider and Cheese Festival in Ellsworth this weekend. And in sports, a Hamden Bronco is signing her letter of intent to play in Providence next year. We'll be right back. A rivalry reborn. Cowboys, Packers, Sunday on Fox. Welcome to Rebecca's. For over 30 years, we've been serving our local customers in downtown Bangor, and we invite you to explore our historic shop. Rebecca's carries many main-made products from local artisans. Perhaps you need a gift basket for your next celebration. We'll be glad to help. From blueberry ceramic dishes, gourmet foods featuring Stonewall Kitchen, fine wines to antique dishes and furniture, 
you're sure to find that perfect gift. We hope to see you soon at Rebecca's. One bounty versus two of the leading ordinary brand. One sheet of bounty absorbs more than two sheets of theirs. And the winner is Bounty. One and done. Bounty, the quicker picker upper. Skin your face will envy? With Olay Hyaluronic Body Wash, 95% of women had visibly better skin. From dry to moisturized in just 12 days. Be fearless with Olay Hyaluronic Body Wash and Body Lotion. We're lucky to live in Maine. We have a wealth of natural resources, hardworking people, and time for the things that matter. Mechanical Services is all about Maine, with energy efficiency that protects our environment and helps businesses grow. Preventive maintenance and energy solutions that save money. How Maine is that? Mechanical Services, we're everywhere you are in Maine. General Rental Center has been serving Central Maine with equipment and tool rentals for more than 30 years. Our extensive inventory contains everything you need to get the job done right. Our professional, knowledgeable staff is here to make sure that you get the highest quality rental items to complete your project and that they have been serviced and maintained to the highest standards. Power brooms to get that sand off the lawn, leaf blowers, brush chippers, stump grinders, aerial lifts, tillers, and excavators. We rent most everything. If you don't see it in our online catalog, please ask for it. If we don't have the item you need, we would be happy to help you find it. The FIFA World Cup has moved to the holidays. Oh, my gooseberries. This is going to make everything wonderful. we got work to do. We're going to need a ton of stars and sweaters. Cannot. Some am Is Isn't he getting kind of old? 3,000 more Mbappé! You know what we need? A song. Do you have any idea how busy I am this time of year? Okay, maybe not a song. But just think of the lights. But the U.S. winning it all would be a Christmas miracle. These rescue dogs are now rescuing vets thanks to the Pets for Vets animal training and pairing organization. Fox's Brooks DeRose has more on the impact it's had on one Air Force veteran. She's been my lifesaver. Service comes in a variety of forms. Jeff Thomas's service began in Germany as an Air Force sergeant during the Cold War, a veteran who has struggled with PTSD. I didn't sleep at night. It was just, it was horrible. And um, so I, you know, took it upon myself to say, hey, look, I need some help. That help came with four legs, a big heart, and an appetite. Good girl. Ready? Maddie is a certified service canine who also knows a few tricks. Stay. Okay. Oh, good girl. She's part of the Pets and Vets program at the Animal Rescue Foundation in Walnut Creek. This is Boston. He's one of our newest recruits. Turning rescue animals into trained service dogs for dozens of veterans at no cost to them. They've given so much to us. We wanted to give a little something back to them. <laughs> Trainers teach skills to help the dogs assist with veterans' specific psychological needs. We say that the Pets and Vets program is saving both ends of the leash. It's helping the rescue dogs and the veterans, and we need volunteers to help be a part of that. Foster families take on dogs like Boston for a few weeks to make sure they're up for the task. If they are, it's time for training. They're paired with a veteran just like a battle buddy. I'm not sure I'd even be here if I didn't have her. Thomas says Maddie has reduced his anxiety and improved his sleep. I don't have to worry about getting up and checking the windows and checking outside because she does that. Pets and Vets has also given him a new community, fellow veterans with their service dogs, each of them with their constant companion by their sides. I told my wife one day, I, I told her, I said, well, if, it be, if it's between you and Maddie, I said, pack your stuff. <laughs> All kidding aside, Thomas says he's seen life-changing results. Dozens of veterans with traumatic brain injuries, severe depression and PTSD, all now have a hero. She's, she saved my life, you know, and that's, to me, that's what heroes do. 
never underestimate the power of a dog. Alrighty, well, bringing music to Maine kids. Today, music and magic of Maine held the great instrument giveaway in Saco, connecting Maine kids with donated instruments. From guitars to keyboards, drums, and more, young people had the chance to take home an instrument. Music and Magic Maine, the organization behind the event, says they've helped more than 150 families over the years. I know for me, uh, without instruments as a kid, it could have been a completely different turn up, you know, whereas um, I had instruments and I was able to express myself and take out my anger on drums and, you know, so so to not have that outlet is 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 unthinkable for me. Well, the organization says if they didn't have what you needed, you can be added to their list. Well, the town of Bar Harbor came together dressed in their best pajamas to celebrate the end of the tourist season and to give back as well. As our Matthew Jaroncic reports, the competition was pretty fierce. On your marks, get set, go! <laughs> On a day where veterans are being honored, there was also a unique event in the town of Bar Harbor and all the town folk came out. Some, some great weather here Friday morning. Um, lots of participants in the, in the bed races, more than we've had in a number of years. Uh, and uh, we had tons of people come out to, to shop at the pajama sale. For years, a pajama sale and bed races tradition has been a staple of the Bar Harbor community for this time of the year, allowing Mainers to have some fun while shopping local. Every year we look forward to this. We just love coming down for the shopping and the races, and it was very exciting as usual uh, to watch. The day is typically highlighted with participants and spectators arriving to the event in their sleepwear, followed by taking advantage of the end-of-the-year deals the local businesses are offering. These stores are left open in Bar Harbor. They're pretty much year-round, and if not year-round, they're closed for like six to eight weeks. So it's good for um, the business in town. You didn't have to race to win today, but it was sure fun for everyone. The smiles on everybody's faces, whether it's watching the bed races or the runners themselves, or seeing the people come out of the, the different shops with the deals they just got at their favorite shop. Uh, there's just, it's just an enthusiasm and, and a, a real sense of happiness and pride in the community here. Matthew Jaroncic, ABC7 and Fox 22. A festival celebrating hard cider and cheese is returning to Ellsworth for its fifth year in a row. Hard cider and cheese tastings will be held both virtually and in person this weekend at locations throughout downtown Ellsworth or perhaps from the comfort of your own home. For those attending in person, Fogtown Brewing Company is hosting cider pressing, apple tasting, and live music starting at 2 o'clock on Saturday. The festival market, which takes place in Merrill Park, also takes place on Saturday, that one from 10 to 3. What it really, I think, does for the community is it sort of helps kind of create a little bit of an identity for Ellsworth. It kind of highlights some things that we've plucked kind of from the history that, that really sort of resonate with, uh, with the folks here in, in our city. Well, the in-person cider and cheese tastings are held at 86 this with one Saturday at 6 and an additional tasting Sunday at 2. Now, if you want to attend virtually, you can purchase a cider and cheese basket online, pick it up to bring home, and then, of course, tune in. More information can be found at heartofellsworth.com. That definitely sounds like a winner right there. All righty, folks. Well, Conrad is going to be back with our full five days. Stay with us. It's Veterans Day and temperatures once again well above average in those mid-60s, but big changes are on the way. Colder weather will be here very shortly when I'll have all the answers coming up. Comfy, cozy, relaxing. Not Joe. Joe's Furniture. Joe's Furniture Warehouse in Newport is the place to find rockers, recliners, sofas, and easy chairs. Quality furniture, affordable prices. Not your average Joe. Joe's Furniture Warehouse, Grogan Avenue in Newport. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Are you ready? When the forecast calls for nasty weather, all roads lead to down east. With Toyota's impressive lineup of 15 all-wheel drive and four-wheel drive vehicles, you're sure to find a model and payment that's right for you. Don't see it on our lot? Here's the latest update on models arriving soon. Pre-order yours now for the fastest delivery. When main roads get messy, all roads lead to down east. Your four-wheel drive and all-wheel drive headquarters on Wilson Street in Brewer. Say goodbye to lag times and death spirals with our crazy fast fiber internet. At GoNet Speed, we've dropped our prices on fiber. That means hello to fast fiber internet starting at just $49.95 per month. 
or go up to one gig. That's 1,000 megabits per second for only $69.95 a month. The lowest prices we've ever offered. No contract, no hidden fees, no joke. Visit GoNetSpeed.com to check availability in your area. 911, what's your emergency? We have a blip emergency. Ken, I want you to kill that light tower. Remain calm! Starting compressions! <laughs> Losing someone out there is never easy. New Mondays at 8, 7 central on Fox or anytime on demand or Fox Now. Durable, sturdy, stylish. Not Joe. Joe's Furniture. Joe's Furniture Warehouse in Newport is the place to find solid wood, built to last, made in main dressers, bureaus, and nightstands. Not your average Joe. Joe's Furniture Warehouse, Grogan Avenue in Newport. I love the smell of napalm in the morning. Fixing things in my job. We're going to get the job done. The Resident, all new Tuesdays on Fox. Our main weather today is brought to you by Varney Ford in Newport. They give one full year maintenance on every new and used vehicle they sell. Come visit them and see their huge selection of cars and trucks. The nice car and truck people. So I want to start out by saying happy Veterans Day to everybody serving and everybody that has served in the past. Now getting into weather. Not the nicest weather as a lot of rain is moving in from the south. Take a look at this whole batch of rain moving in and it is going to continue overnight tonight. So all of us are in on that rain right now and that rain's going to actually pick up an in intensity overnight. Same thing into the first half of the day tomorrow. Pretty much uh, raining for the most of the day and then we really start to clear up later at night before round two of the rain starts moving by Sunday. Even a little bit of snow in the northern part of our state. That blue is finally back, folks, and that blue means snow. So winter weather is finally slowly starting to move in. We're thinking around an inch of snow in Bangor, maybe localized two-inch rainfall totals, especially a little south, closer to the coast. Machai is still looking at maybe an inch and a half, closer to two inches in some spots as really heavy rain will be continuing tonight into tomorrow. Dew points are also a bit on the higher end. It does feel sticky outside. I was walking around, really felt like the rain was on the way with those dew points being up there, but don't worry. Those will continue to drop by Sunday into Monday and then pretty much all through next week. Dew points will be low, so it will feel comfortable, but on the 180 side, it's going to feel much colder. Temperatures today, though, were nice, around 64 degrees, 60s by the coast as well, even a couple of 70s pipe peaking up there in the southern part of the state, so it was really nice outside, but big changes are on the way. Look at all this cold air from Canada. Those are teens, single digits, 20s, 30s, all of that will be coming our way. Right now, we are ahead of this cold front, pretty much lingering right there, so you can see 70s in uh, Washington, D.C., same thing in North Carolina. So it feels more like a beginning of fall type of day. But like I said, changes are happening starting Sunday. 51 as a high and then even cooler by Monday. And the rest of the week, we'll have some below average temperatures in those low to mid 40s. Tonight, though, really mild temperatures sticking around mid 50s. A couple of showers and thunderstorms. This will be a bit on the heavier side. So if you do get woken up by some of this rain or lightning and thunder, do not be surprised as that rain will continue throughout the day tomorrow. Mid 60s at that locally heavy rain and that wind will be blowing around. Our extended forecast outlook does show lots of rain sticking around on Saturday. Then on Sunday, a couple of rain chances, especially later in the day, Monday and Tuesday, we're in the clear, so those are the days to go out and enjoy the sunny skies, but temperatures will be cold, so put on a couple of layers and then mix of rain and snow by Wednesday. Beth? I'm Red, thanks so much. It's still to come on Fox News at 10. A Hamden Broncos signs her letter of intent to play in Providence next year. That story and more sports with Ryan Sudall after the break. Now is the best time to get a great deal on a vehicle at number one Van Sickle Kia. 
We have a great selection of quality pre-owned vehicles with payments and prices for every budget. Plus, we'll pay you top dollar for your late model vehicle, even if you don't buy from us. There's never been a better time to buy, sell, or trade at Van Sickle Kia. The best cars, the best prices, and the best warranty. I'm Peter Van Sickle. I guarantee it. It's been a great summer at Dorsey Furniture, but it's time to start thinking about fall. Our new fall introductions are arriving daily and we need to make room. This means big discounts on selected items. How big? Half off. We didn't stop with just a few items. We have marked down every item in every department. Come to Dorsey Furniture during our fall clearance sale and you won't be disappointed. Dorsey Furniture, Route 1A, Holden. When pipes froze and water damage ravaged a home, Bouchard Cleaning was there to restore and dry things up. When a home in Wells needed mold remediation, Bouchard Cleaning and Restoration performed as promised. From Madawaska to Owl's Head, Ashland to Bath, we've answered the call. More than just a cleaning company, we're restoring Maine. Statewide commercial and residential services, Bouchard Cleaning and Restoration. On Good Morning Maine, we start each day with a fresh look at what's happening and what's to come. All the information you need, fast and to the point. All while having a little fun, too. We want to set you up for your best day ahead. And you get a great start to your day by watching Good Morning Maine. This family's hanging on to a lot of secrets. Let me tell you the guy to cut you down. Monarch, Tuesday on Fox. Tonight Sports is brought to you by Ansley Moore, a realtor since 2013, working throughout the state of Maine with both buyers and sellers with a focus on the greater Bangor area. Hello everybody, Ryan Sudall here. Thank you so much for sticking with us. First of all, a happy Veterans Day to all those who have served and their families. You are all of our heroes. Well, this one was a big one. This week was a big one in local sports. Let's start with football, regional finals, and state semis all over the place. And we're going to start at Foxcroft Academy with some Class D action. Top seeded ponies hosting the four seed. Actually, that's the, that's the end of the video there. Uh, the top seeded ponies hosted the four seed Winthrop Monmouth Haldale. Um, and the winner heads to the Class D final in the first quarter. Foxcroft leads 7 to nothing and a field goal, which unfortunately you can't see right now. But the Haitian sensation, Kemsley Marsters, nailed a 35-yarder to make it 10 to nothing. Foxcroft. Here, here I am. And in the second quarter, Caden Crocker took the rock and went virtually untouched for the touchdown. And it made it 17 to nothing. And then the third quarter, Foxcroft's Wyatt Rayfield aired it to the back of the end zone to J. Don Richard. He made a great sliding catch. 23 to nothing, Foxcroft. They went on to win 32 to nothing, a shutout as the Ponies ride to the Class D final. Now let's go down to Hamden Academy for Class C now. The North Regional Final between Herman and Madomic Valley. Fourth quarter, Herman down 26 to 14. Gotta put something together. Not if Porter Gahagan has anything to say. He sacks Hawks QB, Johnny Kokoska on third down. Next drive, Madomic QB, Liam Wilson on the keeper. He gets in, PAT makes it 33 to 14, Panthers. Herman again trying for a miracle. Kokoska dropping back, looking for a screen. But Kryptonite strikes again. Porter Gahagan with the pick. He's fired up and rightfully so. Here comes the Gatorade bath right here for Coach Ryan Snell as Madomic Valley wins 40 to 20. Class C North is theirs and they go to the Class C State Final. Okay, let's go to some out of town scores. Class B North Regionals, congratulations to Skowhegan. They beat Fal uh, Falmouth to become the Class B North champions 28 to 20. The Class D semifinals, Lisbon beats Freeport 28 to, 28 to 21. They will face Foxcroft next week for the Class D Final. Eight-man large state finals and eight-man small state finals at 11 and 2.30 tomorrow. Eight-man large, Water Waterville and Yarmouth. Eight-man small, Orono Old Orchard. Both of those games taking place at Coney High School down in Augusta. Let's go to some college wim uh, women's college hoops now. One local athlete has signed her national letter of intent to continue her basketball career with the Friars down at Providence College. Hamden Academy's Bella McLawen put pen to paper on Thursday night, officially marking the next step in her basketball journey. Bella has led Hamden to a state finals appearance and has really anchored the Broncos these past few years. She says that she knew that Providence was the perfect fit for her right after her visit last year, and that's when she officially made the decision. 
She also says she wouldn't be where she is today without her family. I have to say my parents for sure. I mean, I know that sounds cliche, but uh, my dad is someone that I really, really look up to and someone who's given me a lot of perspective. And my mom used to play basketball, and she's always out in the yard with me and stuff like that. So um, not only my parents, but my coach. I've been fortunate to have really good coaches and really good teammates. McLawn will be going to the Big East where she'll play teams like UConn twice a year. She says that competition night, night in and night out is what she's most excited for. She's looking to make an impact right away with her Friar squad and her future and current coaches have both been impressed not only by what she does on the court, but how she does it too. The one thing uh, that Coach Crowley has talked to me about why he recruited me is just because like, I'm a tough player um, and I'm just going to give it my all. It's about, you know, there's not many things you can control, but attitude and effort are two things you can always control. And so uh, just always playing my hardest, not worrying about like the shots, like all that stuff will come. I don't have to coach effort in practice. Uh, she sets the pace for just about every single drill that we do, and there's no false effort in that. That's how she does everything. It is to her best at 100 miles an hour, full speed, giving everything she has. That's all the time we have for sports. We'll be right back after the break. Each year, St. Jude Children's Research Hospital works to improve the lives of kids and their families around the world. And this holiday season, Kia wants to help. We're continuing our tradition of helping others by expanding Kia's Accelerate the Good partnership with St. Jude and making a donation for every new car purchased during the holidays. Join us and help celebrate Kia's season of giving back. Kia, movement that inspires. If you're a Medicare beneficiary and live in the area, call now to see how this little card could get you some big benefits, including money added back to your Social Security check. With one toll-free call, you can find out how easy it is to get all of your original Medicare coverage, plus extra benefits. You get an all-in-one plan designed to fit your needs so you can be your best every day. You could have medical coverage, prescription drugs with $0 generics, dental, vision and hearing, plus the WellCare Visa Flex Card, money for over-the-counter items, and money back in your Social Security check each month, and so much more. And here's more good news. You can get a WellCare plan for a $0 monthly premium. How can WellCare offer all of those benefits for a $0 monthly premium? It's simple. Medicare Advantage and Medicare Part D prescription drug coverage are important parts of Medicare. WellCare has a contract with Medicare to offer and provide these important options to you. Call right now to get your free copy of the WellCare All-in-One Guide. Call 1-866-819-7962 now. There is absolutely no obligation for requesting this free information. WellCare offers benefits that go beyond the basics, including money added to your Social Security check to help cover your Part B premium. Call today to get your free copy of the All-in-One Guide with absolutely no obligation. Your free plan guide will give you the details you need to make a smart choice for your Medicare coverage. Just call 1-866-819-7962. Remember, there's no obligation for requesting this free information. So call 1-866-819-7962. WellCare. Call today. Saturday strong as C.J. Stroud and number two Ohio State battle Indiana. Oh! Big noon Saturday on Fox. One of George Clooney's films is being turned into a TV series. Christina Aguilera gets ready to share her life story and more. Here is all of the latest from the Hollywood Nation. 
Wick returns Aguilera tells her story and Clooney gets an adaptation in the Hollywood Nation. Okay, fellas, here we go. George Clooney's six-time Oscar-nominated film Good Luck and Good Night is heading to the small screen. AMC Networks is developing a limited series based on the 2005 black and white drama. It centers on real-life veteran journalist Edward R. Murrow's battle against U.S. Senator Joseph McCarthy's anti-communist crusades in the 1950s. Clooney, who co-wrote, directed, and starred in the film, is on board to co-produce the show. Also in the works, a documentary highlighting the career and personal life of Christina Aguilera. According to Deadline, the pop superstar has been working on the film for the past 18 months. It will feature never-before-seen footage and exclusive behind-closed-door moments. The Queen of Burlesque, Dita Von Tees, is also working on her own documentary. It will chronicle her humble beginnings in Michigan to becoming pop culture's most famous striptease artist. I'm going to need a gun. And Keanu Reeves is back in action in today's first looks. Lionsgate released the first trailer to John Wick Chapter 4, featuring Reeves as the popular super assassin facing off with a new enemy played by Bill Skarsgård. The highly anticipated sequel opens in theaters March 24th, 2023. Last words, Winston. Just have fun out there. <laughs> Ashley Dvorkin, Fox News. Well, holiday feelings of happiness can give way quickly for homeowners if three things happen. More than a third of 1,000 adults surveyed by home security company Simply Safe say they fear a holiday mishap. Now, about 40% say they've experienced electrical fires or burned wood burned food or kitchen fires, and about 45% say they've had packages stolen from their front porch. Now, frozen pipes is another feared holiday mishap. Simply Safe says data shows people begin worrying about the potential disasters in advance of the holidays. Hopefully you can take some precautions there. Well, Wendy's iconic Frosty is getting a new flavor just in time for the holidays. The fast food chain will start selling a peppermint Frosty starting on Tuesday. It's for a limited time only, and Wendy's is saying goodbye to the strawberry flavor to add the new holiday-themed one to its menu. Well, the National Hall of Fame announcing their latest inductees this year, the top light bright and masters of the universe were chosen as the winners among a group of 12 finalists. Now, the Toy Hall of Fame inducts a new class of toys each year at the Strong National Museum of Play in Rochester, New York. Past inductees include a wide range with everything from everyday objects like the stick and cardboard box to technology-based items like Nintendo Game Boy. Last year, the American Girl, doll, American Girl doll, Risk, and Sand were chosen to join the ranks. I see some classic figurines from my era, He-Man and Skeletor. That was my favorite cartoon. Alrighty, folks, well, that is going to do it for us. From everyone here at Fox 22, take care and have a great rest of your night.